music is such a marker of identity, of generational identity, ethnic identity, and things that are close to our identity, our sense of who we are as uh, worshipers, are, are often the most uh, tenaciously held practices. And so there's a, there's a, a deep hold, um, whatever our music of choice is, that, uh, that it has on us, certainly. Every part of American Christianity has brought forth its heroes, you know, its saints, so to speak, to get in a new medium. And a lot of Protestants don't know this, but in the early days of television, one of the most influential and popular preachers was Bishop Fulton J. Sheen, who was so popular that Catholics, looking up to him as their spokesman in public, would go to the local bars to watch his program in the evening because they didn't have television sets in their own homes. In fact, some bars would have a sign out front that would say, TV here, or we have TV. And in Catholic ethnic neighborhoods, that was like a siren call to come out in the evening, bring the whole family and watch Bishop Jay Sheen. In the 1910s and 20s, the church saw the religious possibilities of the motion picture. They understood this was a new story. They got, in the 1910s and 20s, the church understood that this new medium had limitless possibilities to communicate their timeless Christian story. And so they embraced cinema in the early days of film. Yeah, American uh, Christianity in general is tremendously fragmented and decentralized and uh, disunified, you might say, theologically. And uh, what comes with that is a, is a challenge, if not a problem, of speaking with a coherent voice. What is Christianity? What is the gospel? Uh, this person says that, that pa pastor says the other thing. Uh, the message is spoken in so many tongues and so many accents that it's not entirely clear uh, what Christianity is in the end, I think, to a lot of people. And that may undercut the authority of uh, Christian teachings in this culture and beyond.